Having recently reviewed the Richard Donner Superman film from 1978 for my patron Aaron White, I thought I'd carry on going really and uh, dig through the, the rest of the Superman movies. Starting with obviously the theatrical cut of Superman 2. So this is a film that originally was meant to be directed by Richard Donner. He'd shot 75% of the film because they were shooting the first and the second film back to back. The ending of the first film was meant to be the ending of this film in which Superman reverses time. So the ending of the first film would have been different. Basically, Donner fell out with the Solkinds. The Solkinds essentially halted production on Superman 2 and just said, look, Donner, finish the first film, get that bagged up, done and dusted, and we'll get it out. Um, which is why I think Donner then put the ending for the second film onto the end of the first one to really cap it off as a complete piece. Um, that went out and it was a great success at the box office and that's when the Soul Kinds dropped the bomb uh, to Donner that yeah he, he was fired. So they brought his friend, a second unit director, Richard Lester, in. Friend at the time, I don't know if they remained friends after this, but uh, yeah, Richard Lester was given the task of completing the film. Now, unfortunately, due to certain issues with regards to Directors Guild and things like that, as to, as to how you get your, your name on a credit in a film, you have to have shot a certain percentage of it. Uh, now, as 75% of it was already shot, even if uh, Lester finished the 25%, he still wouldn't be able to put his name on as director. So in order to get that right, he reshot a lot of footage, footage as well as shooting new footage. It's a very similar story, isn't it? You know, uh, very recently, you think of Zack Snyder, the Snyder Cut, this, that and the other. Um, yeah, it, it feels very similar. Superman seems to have this history of... of these directorial wranglings, but yeah, I'm not going to talk so much about the Donner cut here because I'm going to review that separately. The Lester cut, I can say, given all the, uh, the wranglings that went on, uh, the, the mess, quite frankly, of production, um, it's surprising it held up as well as it did when it originally came out. I loved this film as a kid. It was my favourite of the Superman films as a kid. I just remember all the action. I remember the villains. Um, I remember that we didn't need to go through all the setup anymore to establish who Superman was. And as a kid, that stuff's more important to you. you you're more entertained by that stuff. Watching this now as an adult, I gotta say, this film doesn't hold up very well at all. And the sensibilities between Lester as a director and Donna really, really do not gel well with each other. Donna was a guy who, who went for epic, kind of gone with the wind, like, yeah, Americana. Whereas Lester is very much about slapstick, about colour. Uh, about foolishness. There's a lot of stuff in here, visual gags, where as a kid, I, I guess I found them funny. I probably would have. I'll, you know, I'll hold my hand up and admit, as a kid, the intended audience, I think, by this point, um, I, 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 I laughed. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Uh, but watching it now with my adult mind, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And you, you look at that first film and how it, it treated the material with respect, very seriously. Uh, this one, it, it seems to just, yeah, languish in visual gags that aren't that funny and feel a little bit beneath the material that we were given for the first film. Add to that, you've got weird things that happened that were never established in the first film so superpowers that we never saw in the first film suddenly you know Zod, Non and Ursa are able to just control things with their minds it seems at one point they take a gun from a sheriff's hand seemingly by the power of will uh, it floats through the air towards them and then they do the same at the end when they're lifting people up with their fingers from a distance and you're just thinking what what 
what is this? This is this is weird. The bit with the gun does remain in the Donner cut, but that's because he didn't get to shoot the the footage in uh, uh, yeah in uh, in small town America. That uh, uh, a lot of that stuff was done by Lester, and unfortunately Donner had to keep it. Um, so yeah, we get the floating gun in the Donner cut, but um. Here, yeah, it, it's just, like I say, it's a clash of tone. It is, we've got powers that are introduced that weren't introduced in the original in the original film that don't even make sense. You know, at the end of the film, Superman kisses Lois Lane in order to erase her memory. And it's almost like it becomes like a get-out-of-jail-free card with Superman's powers. You know, in the comic book, Superman's powers are firmly established. He's got heat vision, x-ray vision, super strength, he can fly, you know, he's, he's got certain powers that have been well established and that's it. Whereas this film, it's like, oh, we, we need to get out of this situation. Invent a power. It just, he's got this particular power and it gets to a point of stupidity where it's like, okay, well, there's literally no situation that Superman can't get out of. And add to the fact that we've just come off the back of a film <clears throat> in which the ending of said film is Superman travelling back through time in order to erase the events that have happened so he can rejig it. In which case, you never feel like there should ever really be a threat anymore, you know? Uh, and, and the only reason there is remotely a threat in this film is because Superman has his powers taken away from him. But that lasts all of, oh, five minutes. He literally take, has his powers taken away because he wants to live with Lois as a human being and then instantly regrets the decision because the first place he enters as a human is a bar in which he gets into a fight and is beaten up by someone and then realizes oh crap i've made a mistake so many incidences like that where things happen sequentially in this film where it's just like it's the most convenient of timing like lex finds out certain things just at the time when it's convenient for him to know about them um and, and you just feel like the, the puzzles are all being the, the puzzle the pieces of the puzzle are all being laid out in such a manner that oh yes it just fits too neatly uh we're being given information uh, at the exact time the characters need it rather than as is in real life things happen and then you just you have to deal with it and that's where conflict arises here as well the romance between Superman and Lois and how that affects Superman's behavior his decision to to give up his powers it all just happens like really quick like there's no real thought process goes into Superman's decision to let his powers go it feels like he, he just lets them go like that and, and it's like whoa dude think about it for one moment, just the ramifications of it, uh, you know, where there's, there's no weight in the moment. He just gives up these powers like it's nothing and then instantly regrets it. Some of the battle sequences at the end, still, there's, there's some stuff in there that holds up. Again, that's a lot of the stuff Donna shot, to be perfectly honest. The stuff that Lester kind of shot and then inserted into it to make it his is what really brings it down the slapstick humor the bizarre comedy um apparently none of the stuff with gene hackman in this is lester's he didn't shoot an ounce of footage with gene hackman because hackman said no he said i mean i made the film with with donna uh and that's that um as as did several other people in the making of the film who walked away after the soul kind's ridiculous decision to let Donna go. One of those people being composer John Williams, whose score is kind of used in this by a different composer who kind of riffs on it a bit, but it sounds terrible. It doesn't sound anywhere near as operatic and theatrical as John Williams' original score for, for Superman. It, it, it sounds like a, a, a really debased a version of it. There's a scene in, in this that it, it just feels like it's there for the sake of action, um, which is the Eiffel Tower sequence at the beginning. I don't think it really does anything to push the story forward or tell us anything we didn't already know about characters. 
It's literally just there to, one, to, again, help give Leicester that director's credit by having shot some footage, um, and two, throw in some more action for the kids who, you know, as I say, I clearly enjoyed it as a kid. Now I look at it and I just think, why is this here? Then you've got all the stuff with Marlon Brando, obviously. One of the, one of the big decisions by the soul kind, uh, the soul kinds to, to, uh, that, that, that kind of affected the whole argument between them and, and Donna and, and whatnot was the decision to not have Marlon Brando's footage that was shot by Donna be used in Superman 2. Um, they said, basically, because of the contract they had that they'd made themselves with Marlon Brando, uh, because of the, the amount of money that was made by the first film, it meant that Brando would get a percentage of whatever would be made on Superman 2 should his footage be used. So, they don't use it. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons, as I say, that Donna fell out with them, because it's like, I, I, I want to shoot it my way. If I don't want to, do, if I don't shoot it my way, then I don't want to do it. Um, so they said, "Okay, bye." Um, but uh, yeah, it, it 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 doesn't work. It because they they show us a scene from the original film uh, using some of Donna's footage, but with Marlon Brando excised out. So they're rewriting history. Uh, you know, a, a scene we've already seen in the first film is now replayed, but not replayed. It's rewritten. So you're kind of, you're kind of left thinking, oh, okay. That, so did this stuff happen twice with different people? It just, it doesn't make sense. You know, as I say, other than to, to give Lester those rights, the director bragging rights, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, it the continuity is off completely off. I could understand if they reshot it and then just recast Jorel. You know, if you, 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 do that. Reshoot the whole thing, but recast Jorel. Uh, at least that way you've got the continuity of, of the dialogue that was said and, and the, the, the story beats and, you know, like, we get, we get told by Zod at one point in this film that, um, that, that Jorel is, is the reason he was sent to the Phantom Zone. And yet, there's no evidence of that in the scene that we get replayed here, because Jorel is absent. So in this film, we get kind of a repeat of uh, Lois Lane kind of thinking that Superman is Clark Kent, and then realising he's not, and then she finds out he is because, why? He trips over and falls in a fire. Someone with his strength, his agility, his stamina, his, his level of balance, his, his, his powers, he, he trips over and falls into a fire. And you're just thinking, I get that Clark likes to play the bumbling idiot at times uh, to keep up that persona, but even for him, this, this, it doesn't make sense, it's stupid. These are all things that, as I say, as a kid, I didn't see them. Uh, and I don't think you do as a kid. You, you watch films through the lens purely of, does this entertain me? And as a kid, it, it did. And, and I, I watch it now and I just think a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. A lot of it is silly. Um, and yeah, I, I, I can't quite see in this what I saw in it when I was a when I was a kid. Reeve is still great as Superman. Uh, I still like Kidder as Lois Lane. Like, you know, all the actors in this do a really great job. Um, Sarah Douglas, who plays Ursa, I think comes off a lot better now as, as an adult than she did as a kid. I don't think I, don't think I appreciated what she does in, in this film, uh, performance-wise, as a kid compared to what I do now. Other than performances and some pretty good action scenes, the stuff that was shot by Donna, it's not that great. I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five. Um, I expect that that will garner some hatred. Uh, I, I know that when I posted my Superman review, uh, a lot of people in the comments said that Superman 2 was their favorite. 
Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm going to revisit the Donner Cut. So let's see. Let's see how that one fares when I get to it. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this film and my thoughts on it. Uh, uh, thank you for watching this review and until next time, cracking.